Hello everybody, the Ice Palace event has started today. I am on my highly neglected AU account on the AU server to go through the tutorial on here because I've already completed the tutorial on my international game. The Ice Palace event probably seems like a completely new event for us, but it's actually a reimagined slash improved version of the old excavation promo that we had several years ago. My experience with the excavation event just comes from what I've seen in videos and pictures and hearing other players talk about it, so I can't make any comparisons between the two, which pretty much to me means that the Ice Palace event is a completely new event for me. We're going to go through the instructions, we're going to go through the tutorial, and as always I've got some tips and tricks you can use or just maybe some better explanations that the event instructions don't actually cover that should help you get through the event a little bit easier. Let's get started. How do I play? You have to break ice doors and discover prizes, obstacles, or tools that you can use to upgrade Roby. Roby, you have to use him every day to drill through the Ice Palace's ice doors and get to the Divine Horse. Make Roby progress by using tools and upgrade. You can choose to upgrade how much drilling he can do, you can upgrade his recovery time, and you can also upgrade how powerful his drilling is. We'll get into a bit better explanation of that in a little bit. The Jackpot Divine is the new Nordic Divine Horse Ron. You have to reach the last room of the ice palace to free her and that's how you win her let's take a look at her real quick this isn't really a divine that i want uh i have wanted a divine that with this particular perk for a while but it's not really something i want to spend loads of passes on her perk is that you have to lift the veil that has descended on the nordic worlds by winning points with the different rides i showed that in a tesser video with thor i think it was if you want to have a look at that even though i didn't realize at the time that i did one of the incorrect rides with him you have to get 420 points, the veil will be raised, and she gives you a prize, which is a foal of a breed with the coat you don't yet have. This will just be a rolling gain foundation foal. It's not going to be a skiller with loads of skills and high GP or anything. It actually, it's basically the same perk as one of the, the prehistoric divine source we have. I can't remember which one that is. We have too many for me to keep track of all their perks. That's the new Nordic Divine, and of course we have Golden Horseshoes. You have to collect at least two Golden Horseshoes to take part in the prize draw at the end of the event. These are the thresholds you have to reach. The first Golden Horseshoe is gained after you get through five rooms, and the second Golden Horseshoe is gained after you get through 20 rooms, and then you can get the other two Horseshoes once you've reached 65 rooms, and then the fourth one when you've gone through 120 rooms, which I'm probably not going to do that. All right, let's start the tutorial. I kind of wish I would have just uh, enlarged my screen for this particular video because I really like the background for this event. It's quite nice. It's a background that I would like to get for the Isles Helios Ray, but I think it's just easier for you guys to be able to read the text when I have my screen cropped down because it zooms in a bit better. And we've got Al the Monkey to help us with the tutorial. Hey, did you come to help me free Ron from her icy prison? Yes, I guess we did. You must pass from room to room to get to her. And if you're wondering how many rooms it's going to take to get to Ron, it says right over here, you have to get through 120 rooms. This here is a room. If you notice, there are four different doors right here. You'll see these four doors throughout all the rest of the rooms. You can't always break down all the doors. Some Sometimes it's just one. Doesn't matter how many doors you break, it's just how many rooms you get through. And this here tells you how many rooms you've actually gotten to, this top number right here. So you must pass from room to room to get to her. Let's continue. You have to break the ice to release the door and go through. We have to free Roby first. Roby? Roby? I'm going to call it Roby. <laughs> you can't drill anymore. You have to use a stick of dynamite to inflict five blows on this door. I've noticed a couple players that said that this charged them a pass during the tutorial. The tutorial should not charge you a pass to get through it. If it charged you a pass and you've checked your pass history to be sure it did actually take a pass, take a screenshot of that and fill out a ticket to contact us because the tutorial should not be charging you a pass. This will charge you a pass obviously if you use it throughout the rest of the event, but for right now this should be completely free to use. All right, we're going to use this. We're going to get through. You freed Roby, he'll help you explore these ruins. And once you leave a room, you ain't be able to go back that way again. Let's go to the next room. There is a warg behind this door. You woke up the warg. You either have to wait the time stated or you can complete the objective. All right, time's up and we're gonna go through to the next room. Okay, a tool is trapped in this door. If you can get your hands on it, it'll help you upgrade Roby as you progress. These are the tools that you have to use to upgrade Roby. You have to keep clicking. Lots of clicking here. And another click. Yay! Awesome. Only four tools left and you can upgrade Roby. You have to fill this gauge up all the way 
which means you have to collect five tools. Once you've collected five tools, you'll get a pop-up and it will let you choose one of the three options to upgrade Roby. Again, we're going to talk about the upgrade options in a little bit. All right, let's keep going. Roby looks tired and he can't do much more drilling. You can reload half of his batteries instantaneously by using this feature. So it only goes up halfway. That will cost you a pass later on when you get started in the event. Again, this is the tutorial. It should not charge you a pass. Great, you've got all you need to start off well. Good luck. I've got a few. Let's go ahead and beat this down so we can get a golden horseshoe. One more click. Yay, okay, you've released something from the ice. We get a golden horseshoe. Yes, I know. We won't be able to turn around. Okay, here we have four different doors to choose from. There is no map or correct route or incorrect route to take. All these doors are gonna lead to the same place in the end. It doesn't matter which door you wanna click. Like I said a little bit ago though, if you just want the divine for as cheaply as possible, just only click and break down one door. My suggestion would be to go for the door that has the least amount of clicks. Or if there is a tool behind a door that you want, then go for that tool so that you can fill up this bar to upgrade Roby. If you wanna get all the gifts, you can perfectly you can do that if you want to for example if you want the black orchid and the carrots you can break down both of these doors you'll have to use up a lot of clicks to break down both these doors and then go through one of them to go to the next room or maybe you just want the black orchid you can go ahead and just get through this black orchid door to go to the next room that's fine what I want to do I want to get through some of the better prizes and if we look at the prizes page we can see the first prizes, these should go in order, by the way, in which you see them on the prize page, which means in the next room, we should be able to see a classical saddle. It, when I say next room, though, I don't literally mean like the very next room. It could be a couple rooms farther on that we'll see the classical saddle, but the next room we see a prize, it should contain a classical saddle. I'm just going to go through the doors with the least amount of clicks for now until I get to some of the better prizes because I'm not really interested in most of this stuff. But it looks like it is possible to win dynamite sticks from the event, which are like free clicks basically. All right, let's go back. I'm just going to go through the doors with the least amount of clicks for now, which for this one will be a warg. Okay, you woke up this warg. You can either wait four minutes and now 55 seconds. You can complete the objective, which is stroke five horses, or you can skip the objective by donating an item to Ow. Or like I said, you can just wait. My suggestion is that since I'm in no danger of maxing out my bar and losing out on any clicks, I'm just going to wait. There's really no hurry for me to rush through this. If you want to go ahead and do the objective or skip it to get through to the next room, you can do that. I'm just going to wait because there's really no point in me rushing through. Okay, now let's talk about a few tips and tricks that the event doesn't really touch on. First though, if you are on the mobile version and did not get the tutorial, how you start that is that uh, this is what happens when you click on the event banner, you'll be taken to this page. You hit play now, you will hit this big image of Roby and your page will look a little bit different than this because I've already completed the tutorial, but you'll see Roby in this top right door right here, you have to click on that and then it will take you through it. That's all you have to do. It's not really a tutorial like on the classical version, but that's how you get through it. I'd probably recommend if you're a little bit lost, switch to the classical version on your mobile device. It's just a little bit easier. Now, something that the event instructions here did not say is how long it actually takes to get a charge. This countdown timer right here where it says full battery in one day and 19 hours and 56 minutes, that's how long it takes to fully recharge this whole bar. That doesn't mean that's how long it will take until you gain one more move. Let's say I'm out of move moves right now. That doesn't mean that, oh crap, I'm stuck here for another day. Um, it actually just takes four hours to gain a charge if you have not upgraded Roby at all. And you can see the information on that by going to community events form. And we're going to go to the ready to explore the ice palace topic in your server's events form. There are a little bit more detailed instructions in the events form. I'm not sure why these aren't on the event on the actual event page. They should be, but they're not. So check your server's events form for the ice palace topic. Now we want, is it this one? We want this one. No, we want this one in particular because it gives more information about Roby and his upgrades. Roby digs and forages on the ice doors to break them. Roby uses energy when digging through the doors. Once the energy gauge is empty, you must either wait for it to refill, 
pay for a refill for one pass, or use a dynamite, which counts as five clicks. The battery refills point by point, starting with one every four hours and can be upgraded to reach one every 30 minutes. So this right here, if you're wondering how long it takes to recharge Roby, it's one point, which is, I have to go back, oops, <laughs> which is this here. This is like one point. I'm just going to call it like one bar, one section. This takes four hours to regenerate that. Let's talk about the upgrades because to me, this is the trickiest aspect of the event. Roby can be upgraded three times maximum. Each time you upgrade him, you can choose among the three possible upgrade choices as seen here. You have upgrade A, which increases the battery's capacity. That's convenient if you log in less often. Upgrade B, that accelerates the battery regeneration. And for C, that increases the power of each drill or clicks. You can mix and match these options if you want to. That means that if you wanted to choose A for all three upgrades, you can do that. Or you could choose B for your first upgrade, A for your second, C for your third, maybe B for your first two upgrades, and then A for your third. However you want to do that, that's fine. And then the thresholds for each of these upgrades are as follows. For A, to increase the battery capacity, your capacity is this bar right here. You start off with this bar only being able to hold 12 clicks maximum. If you were to choose upgrade A the first time, you will go from your bar holding 12 clicks to holding 18 clicks maximum. The second time you choose A, you'll be able to hold 24 clicks maximum. And the third and final time you choose A, your battery capacity will be at 30 maximum clicks. Clicks. This option for me isn't very useful. I log in often enough that I don't have to worry about my bar maxing out and not being able to gain any clicks until I use some. I'm not going to use option A at all, but it might be useful for you if you're somebody who maybe you can't log in for two days and you don't want to have to worry about your battery capacity maxing out for a while. Now option B to me is a little bit more useful because this accelerates the battery regeneration, meaning the time between clicks gets shorter the more you choose upgrade B. When you start off the event, you gain one click every four hours. The first time you choose upgrade B, you will gain one click every two hours. The second time you choose to upgrade B, you gain a click every one hour. And the third and final time you choose B, you gain a click every 30 minutes. Option B to me kind of reminds me of the pinatas where the farther along you go in the event, then the less amount of time you have to wait between your clicks. That's what this one reminds me of. The final upgrade is C. That increases the power of each drill or your clicks. At the beginning of the event, one click equals one point. For example, if we look at this a black orchid door right here. If I were to click this door right now, I would go from needing four points to three points because it just takes one point off. Now, if you were to choose upgrade C the first time, you go from one click equaling one point to one click equaling two points. The second time you choose C, one click will equal three points. And the third time you choose C, one click will equal four points. Strategy wise, I'm not sure how you should mix and match these upgrade options. Perhaps there's like a mathematical way that you can figure this out. Something to keep in mind though, is that the farther along you go in the event, the more clicks each door will require. Like right now, your doors are only requiring four clicks, two clicks to open them. When you get further along in the event, they're gonna start requiring 10 clicks, probably 20 clicks. And I have no idea how many clicks the divine will actually take itself because there was some outrageous number of clicks required on the divine on the test server and it turns out they were still working on trying to balance it so hopefully it won't be so click heavy in the long run i'm not quite sure those are all the tips I have for you guys. This event is a bit more tricky, I think, to grasp. It's not one that I don't think I'm going to go for the divine on this one. I'm just going to go through, get as many cheap, free gifts as I can, and hopefully I'll get some good gifts out of this. Let me know which route you're going to take, if you're going to just get the free gifts or if you're going to try for the divine. Uh, thank you guys for joining me today, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.